So I wanted to continue on a little bit more with the um, micro mesh, and there's some really very cool things you can do with that. Uh, so uh, to start, I'm going to make a piece that I'm going to use as the insert uh, for the for the for the micro mesh. So uh, I'm just going to start again with my uh, cylinder 3D, and I'm going to just draw that out. Switch materials and edit that, and then before making it a poly mesh, come down uh, here. And again, I'm, this time I'm going to make my uh, H divide to four to make it box like, and then um, take the Z size down. Uh, some oops, sorry, that was the X size. I want the, I want the Z uh, size. Well, apparently not. Oh, sorry. Was... There. Um, yeah, that looks good. And then my inner radius till I get something roughly like that. Let's take the Z size down. Let's try 10. Yes, yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, and then let's take a look. Let's go to Shift F, uh, and this is a step you have to watch out for. Make sure you take that uh, V divide all the way down so that you have as simple a geometry as possible. Uh, this way, the face count won't run up uh, too much uh, on these things. So once you have that, then you can uh, make it a poly mesh 3D. And we'll come to Subtool here, and I'm going to rename it uh, to. Let's just call it a box ring. And so now I can uh, use that as the uh, replacement piece on the micro mesh. Um, and let's, one other thing, if you want this thing to go in kind of as a grid, um, then um, you can uh, you'll leave it as is and it'll go in in kind of an orthogonal grid, XY grid. Uh, if you want it more as a kind of a mesh, uh, um, then uh, do this. Just come in and, and get your uh, rotate tool and looking face on at it, uh, just grab that and hold shift and rotate it uh, 45 degrees uh, so that it's pointed like, uh, actually, let's, let me uh, undo that. Let me make sure my floor is, make sure I'm, yeah, looking at it on the floor there. So. Now let's uh, rotate it around the Z uh, to it's a 45 degree angle. And then uh, the, the next thing you'd want to do would be to come to transform and do the uh, set pivot on it so that, yep, it is uh, centered around the pivot. Um, you have to move it around for the floor to update or move the view around. Um, so. Once that's done, yeah, that that's all good. Now I have this this box ring tool here. So uh, I want to draw. What I want to do next is draw out a cylinder uh, 3D. So I'm just going to bring that in. I'm still in edit mode here, and um, I'm just going to leave this as is and I'm going to make it a poly mesh 3D, and then come down and dynamesh that uh, to get a little bit better even. Uh, a little more even geometry uh, on it. So uh, let's come down to Dynamesh. I really, probably I don't need very much. I'm going to try 32. Uh, I'm going to leave Project and Polish on. I'm going to take my blur down to zero and Dynamesh. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Not too much distortion. If you get any distortion out here on the edges, uh, if this starts to look very warped, then come down to, um, for the time being, we'll turn Dynamesh off, um, come down to Deformation and under Relax here. You can try it with or without the circle filled. Uh, let's try Relax there. So that kind of smooths it off on the corners a little bit. Let's try it without. A little better. Yeah, it looks like about the same. So I'm just going to 
run that and get it to round those those edges uh, over a little bit. Let's see about polishing it a little. No, I, don't think, I think it's fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's actually looking a little bit better. I don't want to make it too round and doughy, uh, but I do want some radius uh, around it, and I want fairly even uh, polygons uh, along it. So. I think I'm just going to leave it like this and not worry too much about how that that indents. So now, once it's like this, um, I can do the micro mesh replacement. Let's modify topology. Let's go to micro mesh and pick that box ring uh, that I made. And do that. Oh yeah, I need to turn on uh, under render properties. Draw micro mesh on. And now I should be able to render that and get, yeah, see, so yeah, I've got those the mesh uh, replacement uh, in there. Uh, so that that's looking uh, pretty good. So let's just check it to make sure everything's okay. Might be a little weird in some of these areas, but most of that looks pretty good. Uh, so do Shift F to turn Polyframe off. Let's do one more. Take a look at it. And that this time I'm going to go ahead and convert the that BPR to geometry, and you know, it's it's fairly high point count, but not too bad, and you know, seems to get fairly good performance uh, here. And now I uh, should be able to BPR. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And, I can, and now I can go ahead and turn the draw micro mesh off. Might actually speed up the BPR. Uh, about the same. Um, so if this looks good, great, uh, you know, go, go ahead and work with it as is. But what I want to do is a little bit of uh, manipulation uh, with this. So uh, a couple of things uh, you can do. One is to come to your deformation. And if it's, you know, if it's a little thin uh, through places, just uh, do an inflate. Um, let's, let's just try an inflate of two. OK, a little bit better, maybe four. Okay, yeah, I kind of like that. I like how they kind of interpenetrate a little bit. And also, uh, with it like this now, um, I can let's get that floor off. Come back up to my DynaMesh, and this time take the count up pretty high. Let's try 512. Um, and leave polish and project on blur at zero and dynamesh it and this could uh, take a bit yep it's having to look at the projection okay it's proceeding fairly well if it starts to look like it's going to take a long time I'll, I'll pause the video yeah I'm go ahead and do that okay not too long um, and so now you see I get this as a, a DynaMesh. It does you know, definitely uh, boosts up the count. So you may want to lower. You could try a lower uh, DynaMesh setting, but I kind of like that. Yeah, that's that's looking pretty good, even even fairly close up, uh, and gives me you know, pretty good um, resolution on this. Now most of the time you're not going. To, you're only going to be doing smaller parts. You're not going to be doing a full form. Uh, like this, but um, what I want to do now is maybe uh, do a little editing to this so that it it um, starts to be something else. So I'm going to uh, go to my uh, hold down Control Shift, go to my uh, geometry brushes here, and uh, select the trim curve uh, brush. And what the, the you know, this this brush cuts things uh, away. So I'm going to hold down Control and Shift, and let's just maybe slice the bottom off this thing. And it, and it doesn't. It does, This brush does not. Uh, this is not flattening it the way the clip brushes do. This is actually cutting away the geometry. Um, and if I Shift F, uh, let's get way zoomed in. You can see that it does. Uh, be aware that it does convert you know, things to polygroups, but. 
um, that you can take use that to your advantage. Um, so let's see, I've cut the top of it, of it off. Um, let's poke some holes in it. <coughs> And I'm going to go shift F to turn that back off. So with control shift pressed, I'm going to click on my brush uh, menu and I'm going to get my uh, trim circle brush. And um, under the stroke type here, I'm going to set that to square and center so that when I hold control shift and draw that out, I get a center that radiates out from where my cursor was. And so I could do that then to, uh, say, cut a circular hole in this note that it cuts all the way through uh, if you don't want that to happen you have to hide the uh, part you don't want uh, to be cut so in this case let's rotate around this way and I'm going to hold control and mask off the back of that and then go to this side and control shift and draw the hole that I want and it's going to look like it doesn't do anything. Nope, oh, sorry. Masking doesn't doesn't stop it. Um, we're going to have to hide it. Um, let's clear the mask, and then uh, let's go to our select rectangle. Control Shift and Alt to hide that part of the geometry. Now come back. And switch back to our trim circle and draw that out. It's going to look like it doesn't do anything. Uh, but if we shift F to turn the polyframe on, you see that it it, it brought those. It did that with those. So what I, what I need to do now is uh, just Control Shift click in an empty area to bring everything back, and then. Uh, control shift alt click on the circle or do that and then um, invert the yeah I guess it needs the rectangle there to, yeah to invert the selection and now I can modify topology and delete hidden and that's all gone uh, the the thing to no understand about this though is that by doing that delete hidden, if you look very closely at this, you'll notice that it um, it it just deleted that geometry. So there's no closure here on these ends. Uh, but I think I have Dynamesh still running, yeah, still active. So uh, now it's just a matter of uh, clearing the mask, and it should Dynamesh up. Might might alter the geometry just a little bit. Uh, but it should dynamesh up okay. Again, that's project here. Uh, slows things down, but it helps things look uh, a little better. So now you see that that filled in uh, that geometry. And let's see, let's go shift F to bring that back. So we're still looking pretty good uh, with this mesh barrel uh, here. And again, you could come in and add trim pieces to delineate these edges, uh, however, however you wanted to do it. You know, there's all kinds of uh, things you could do. Let's try some other trim tools uh, here. Let's try a trim lasso. And there, if I wanted, I could cut out. Just be aware that it probably made that cut in that direction from the screen that I was using. Yeah, yeah you can see it's slightly sloped uh, right there. So uh, I hope this helps. You can get some really nice uh, effects out of this. Just understand that it can potentially you know, run your face count up you know, if you had to bring this thing into an animation package uh, to render. Uh, it could uh, uh, it could take a long time.